Hello, I'm Brendan McLeod, one of the authors of Icker Drowned, a new fan-made supplement for Heart, The City Beneath, one of my favorite tabletop RPGs. It's a great game about strange dungeon delvers descending into weird, perilous places. And as someone that runs Heart a lot, I find that one of the most challenging things I run into when I'm preparing games is actually creating delves, the dangerous journeys from one place to another. It's hard to figure out interesting scenarios, strange sights, and weird obstacles over and over and over again. Especially when you don't want to lean on random combat encounters. Brigands and Highwaymen get old real fast, and Heart has much weirder stuff to offer anyway. That's where Icker Drown's Delve Draw comes in. It's a new, exciting tool to help you come up with delves. It's a quick and easy way to generate inspiration for your game using just the book, an ordinary 52 card deck, and a six sided dice. Right now, I'm going to show you how to use it to create a delve for your very own okay, game. Okay, let's use Delve Draws to put together a delve for your Heart campaign. Let's say your party is starting off in an old Vermissian station, a haven that's filled with old, crusty researchers, hopeful engineers, and weird scientists. Maybe one of them is running an experiment, and for whatever reason, they really want some heart's blooded organs. They need the Delvers to take down something big and something dangerous. There's a forest nearby with weird bears and deer and who knows what else. They promise a big reward if they can just bring back some guts. You know, for science. The Delvers agree, whether it's for rewards or science, or they just like hunting big weird bears. So let's think about the domains of this Delve really quick. We're starting somewhere decidedly on the technology side of things. Probably a lot of pipes and metal and weird hallways filled with loose wires and machines. And if we're going to a big weird forest of big weird animals, that's probably a wild domain destination. Maybe a little bit on the cursed side. Those aren't necessarily the only domains we have to work with, but they provide some really nice do uh, bookends that'll help us out. So we have the start and we have the end. Now we need to make some stuff to fit in between. So let's give our deck a quick shuffle. I've got Icker Drown to open the Delve Draws right here. Let's draw some cards and see what we get. Give the deck a quick cut. This is all live. I don't know what these cards are, but I'm just as excited to find out as you. So, starting off nice and simple. We have the two of clubs, so I'm going to browse to the clubs and look at two. Oh, a pleasant grove, closely guarded. That's really interesting because that already puts me in mind of a wild destination. But here we are already starting in the technology area. So maybe this is actually like some sort of Vermissian grove. Maybe this is like some sort of... Um, you know how when you go to an airport or uh, I haven't been in a lot of subway stations, I don't know if they have these sorts of things, but a lot of times you'll have an airport that has sort of like an interior garden or something like that. That's sort of like here is like a nice little natural space within what would otherwise be, you know, all very sterile um, manufactured walls and hallways and stuff like that. Um, so perhaps there's even just starting out in this uh, technological space. There is something that resonates with the natural world in this area. Now that's neat. Um, we don't necessarily know what's closely guarding it. Uh, and we could just use that as the prompt and figure it out from there. But each prompt also has six uh, derivations or alternatives that we can determine by rolling a d6. So let's roll a d6 and see what it is we get and expand on this weird Vermissian garden. Four. Oh, spectacular. Four for two of clubs says... An intoxicating species of flora lives here. Wandering through causes stumbling and stupor. Oh, that's very good. I absolutely can imagine some sort of weird Vermissian station, particularly the Alfier building some sort of um, uh, Vermissian station back when they first tried to build this entire sort of enterprise where there was some sort of beautiful flower that they are absolutely determined to know this is what we have to have here. But of course, it's incredibly intoxicating and incredibly dangerous. And so already we've got something really interesting. We've got sort of the periphery of this Vermissian station has some sort of um, natural hazard that isn't some sort of adversary that's trying to kill the players in some way. It's just something that is intensely dangerous and intensely problematic for moving through this space. Um, why don't we go even a step further and say that this area is like super overgrown, right? This, uh, all these Vermissian stations are collapsed or otherwise run amok in some way. Maybe there are big briar patches. Maybe there's just 
um, vines of thorns uh, rippling throughout. And so if the players do actually fall asleep or something like that, they might wind up taking some serious uh, damage once they stumble into all of this. So your delve actions there might be simply trying to endure uh, whatever it is that's going on here. You might try and sneak around to one side. You might uh, try and scrounge for some sort of uh, filtration device, that kind of thing. Let's go ahead and draw another card, and see what lies on the other side. The King of Hearts, spectacular. Always love to see a face card. The King of Hearts says, the angel comes. Spectacular. What a ridiculous scenario. So, I think perhaps we can go ahead and say that you're not necessarily always going to be fighting an angel in the middle of any given delve. But I do think that having an angel somewhere on the periphery, or at least the evidence or um, uh, collateral from an angel on the move is really, really interesting. I think particularly as we begin to move out of this technological area, perhaps into a space that is colored maybe a little bit more with cursed energy, um, having just the hint of one of these creatures is really interesting. Let's roll another die and see what it is that is going on with this angel. Here is a six. Six says, a great gaping hole. It leads two tiers down. It does not lead back up. That's wonderful. I like this a lot because this gives us um, just a really interesting kind of milestone that allows you to like glimpse other parts of heart, even if you are not necessarily headed that way. This is something perhaps that the rest of this Vermissian station fell into, right? Maybe this is part of the uh, main line that managed to pierce all the way down into tier four. I mean, it says it leads two tiers down. If we're on tier two, this is already like, you could take a complete uh, detour on this delve and just clamber down to tier four. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be, if your players do decide to do that, you might want to really think about like, all right, does this pit just turn into meat past a certain point? Does the pit begin to move? Does the pit begin to cast the players aside? Is the angel still down there? Did the angel go up or down? Odds are good that at least one of any given set of players is going to be like, yeah, I want to go down the hole. Absolutely. Let's say for the sake of argument that this particular group of players is like, the hole will still be here when we're done with our task. Let's go ahead and finish our task. And then we can come back and examine this hole. That already is just another terrific natural barrier that the players then have to deal with over the course of moving from this one really specifically coded space into another. They might wind up doing uh, spelunking through small tunnels in the sides of this great hole or simply repelling from one side of the other like mountaineers, moving into a space that feels less and less like the metallic calls of the Vermissian and more and more like the wooded uh, paths of the forest where they are headed. Let's draw one more card and see what it is that awaits them on the other side of this hole. It's another king. I love this. This is another club. We're going to go to the king of clubs and see what it is that awaits them. The king of clubs says, the cathedral, beautiful and horrible. I like this a lot. This already, let's just, just savor the notion of a natural space that is regarded as the cathedral. I said before, this place is probably wild cursed in some way. Let's say that that's still true, but let's throw a sprinkling of religious in there now that we've drawn the cathedral. What if this space has the material of a forest, but it has the forms of some sort of awful church where you step in through a great set of trees that feels like you're walking in through the doors of one of the great moon temples, where there are pews of trees that are naturally bent over into these configurations, into these awful rows. One of the things that you love to see when you're um, moving into a natural space is that sort of asymmetry, that uh, configuration of simply natural occurrence. Seeing a forest 
seeing some sort of space within heart where it's all natural things. It's bushes and shrubs and grasses and trees, but it's all with the awful sort of symmetry of something that was deliberately constructed of a, of a worshipful space that was created by something that already is deeply unnerving. I like that a lot. I like that enough that I'm not even going to worry about rolling a d6 for this particular one. We could, but I feel pretty happy about what it is that we've got there. That's already some sort of... Let's... Okay. That's already a striking visual, but really we need to think of what is it that we do... What is it that the Delvers do as they move through this space? I suppose they would probably need to figure out what it is about the forms of this place. They would need to reconcile their task with this strange space that they've moved through. So that might wind up being something like discern religion or perhaps even discern cursed in order to figure out if there are particular rituals or motions or signs that they need to observe as they're moving through this space. They might also wind up doing something in the nature of uh, hunt wild in order to try and look past these strange forms and look for traces of these strange beasts that they are supposedly looking for. And who knows, they might wind up finding one of these beasts engaged in some sort of worship, some sort of practice here within the cathedral itself. Who knows? Who knows what sort of religion a heart's blooded bear observes? Really, I suppose that's for you and your group to figure out. And there you have it. A new delve with set pieces and hazards, stuff that points to the larger world past the player's horizon seeds new ideas and new possibilities for future adventures. This delve might wind up being a short jaunt, a longer trek, or maybe even something that defines the whole texture of your campaign. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in Delve Draws or the rest of Vicar Drowned, please give it a look at the link in the description. My co-creator Cillian and I have been working hard on it all year long, and it's really and truly loaded with stuff. Four new character classes, a new ancestry, a new calling, vehicles, plus big adventure down a cursed river into heaven, where you try and kidnap a man from a casino in heaven. He's got it coming. Don't worry. Again, check out the link below. And if you think Icker Drowned is worth it, we'd love your support. Bye, everybody.